Hello everyone, and welcome back to our video tutorial series for Kingdom Hearts 1. In this video, we take a look at the mushroom heartless found throughout various worlds. There are four varieties of these heartless in Kingdom Hearts Final Mix. The white mushroom, the rare truffle, the black fungus, and the pink agaricus. We'll cover them in this order, but before we dive into mushroom mayhem, let's review how we can find these fungi. Feel free to jump around using the video chapters to find the info that you're looking for. Mushroom Heartless are encountered at random in specific areas of most worlds. Let's use Deep Jungle's camp area as an example. There's a chance to encounter white mushrooms here. If the usual Heartless appear when you enter the area, you'll need to perform a room reset to try again. This requires that you move two areas away to reset the encounter. When you return to the camp, you'll have another chance at encountering the white mushrooms. You can also perform a room reset by leaving the world through a save station and landing again. If you have the Encounter Plus ability equipped, you'll only need to move one area away to perform a room reset. Sora learns this ability after synthesizing 15 different items in the Moogle's Workshop in Traverse Town. The White Mushroom is the most common of the bunch. You'll likely encounter them a few times at random as you progress through the story. These Heartless don't attack at all, and instead they want you to help them. The White Mushrooms will mine specific actions, requesting a particular magic spell to be cast on them. If a White Mushroom is shivering, it wants you to cast Fire Magic. If it's fanning itself, you'll want to cast Blizzard Magic. And if you see a light shining above its head, that's your cue to cast Thunder Magic. There are also White Mushroom Heartless that mime actions for the other four magic spells, but they'll only perform these actions in specific worlds. If you encounter White Mushrooms that are permanently frozen in place, these are not your typical white mushrooms. They won't drop the usual items and instead indicate the presence of a pink agaricus, which we'll talk about later on. When you cast the right spell while it's miming, you'll receive technique points. But if you strike them with the keyblade, cast the wrong spell, or cast any spell while it's not miming a specific action, the white mushroom will become angry and vanish after a few seconds. The entire group will also disappear on their own in 100 seconds, so be sure to use your time wisely. When you cast the correct spell on a white mushroom three times, it will drop lots of MP orbs and synthesis items depending on the spells you cast. If you cast different spells on a single white mushroom, the last spell you cast will determine which item you'll receive. For example, casting fire as the last spell will net you a blaze shard, while casting blizzard as your last spell will net you a frost shard instead. There's also a 10% chance at acquiring a mystery goo. It's a rare synthesis item you can use to create high-tier accessories and the ultimate weapon later on. Equipping the Lucky Strike ability to each party member will increase your odds at finding rare items like these. If you cast the same spell three times on a single white mushroom, you'll have a 10% chance of receiving a gem synthesis item corresponding to the type of spell you cast, and double the chance of finding a mystery goo. You're also guaranteed to earn the magic arts for the spell you cast. This item is proof that a white mushroom has acknowledged you as a master of that magic spell. If you collect all seven magic arts and speak to Merlin in Traverse Town, he'll award Goofy the Dream Shield, a decent offensive weapon that also increases Goofy's MP. If Donald and Goofy keep getting in the way when you're trying to watch one of the mushrooms, you can use a summon to remove them from the field. I like to summon Bambi because he'll drop MP orbs every time Sora makes contact with him. You can even use other summons abilities to clear the magic requirements for specific spells. Check out our guide at khguides.com for a complete list of where the white mushrooms appear and which items they can drop. The Rare Truffle is another mushroom heartless that's entirely harmless. You can encounter them in three different areas, and you might need to perform a few room resets to encounter them. These fun little guys want you to strike them into the air and keep them airborne for as long as possible. In return, you can earn lots of experience and rare items. Once you strike a rare truffle into the air, you'll need to continue juggling it using one of three methods. Your first option is to jump under it and strike with a single swing while locked on, then drop to the ground and repeat those actions. You should be able to consistently juggle it once you get the timing down, but you'll need to watch the truffle's trajectory and look out for nearby platforms. The moment a truffle lands on a solid surface, it will disappear and you'll have to start again with another one. As you juggle truffles using this method, they'll typically fly to the left or right depending on your positioning when you strike them. In order to change their trajectory, you'll need to strike them from the opposite side in which you want them to go. 
So if your target is listing to the right and you want it to move to the left instead, you'll need to strike it from its right side. I find this jump and strike method to be the least consistent, especially in those enclosed spaces with platforms where the camera doesn't behave well. If you've acquired Tier 2 or Tier 3 arrow magic, you can juggle the truffles against the wind barrier to keep them along. The airborne truffles will still list to one side or the other, but this method doesn't require you to jump as long as you can stay under your target. One of the most reliable spots to use this method is in this corner of the Halloween Town Bridge area. Before casting arrow magic, move Sora into the nearest truffle to push it towards that corner. It may take a minute or two to move your target into place because of their random jump patterns. When you have one in the corner, cast arrow magic and move Sora into place. This corner has a rounded wall with no ledge detection, so the truffle should remain airborne as long as your arrow magic is active. Don't forget to recast arrow to keep the wind barrier up. The third method to juggle truffles is actually the one I prefer to use most often, and it can only be done on the deck in Neverland. This world allows you to fly while you strike the truffles upward, and as long as you get the timing down, you'll be able to juggle them into the sky without having to worry about them listing to one side or the other. As your target truffle rises into the air, you shouldn't really have to move Sora in between volleys, though I do recommend equipping a keychain with longer reach to help with this. The only other major risk in this process is Sora accidentally striking the ship masts or having truffles land on them. You can avoid this by starting to juggle your target when it's near the edge of the deck, or steer them in between juggles by striking them from the opposite side you want them to travel in. Once you've got a truffle above the masts, all it takes is the right timing to continue juggling them. There will be a point where you'll reach the area's upper barrier and your target truffle will seem to fly a bit higher, so you might need to adjust your attack timing a bit. Just make sure that you're locked onto your target the entire time. With each successful juggle, you'll earn experience in the form of 1 plus the number of consecutive juggles. That means with a maximum of 100 juggles, you'll earn 5,050 experience per truffle. This can be an effective way to earn experience to level up your party later in the game if you can consistently juggle each truffle 100 times. After 10 consecutive juggles, a rare truffle has a chance of dropping a mystery goo that can be used in item synthesis. At 50 juggles, it has a higher chance of dropping a mystery goo, and it will always drop an elixir in the shiitake rank. And after juggling a truffle 100 times in a row, it will drop a mystery goo, a mega elixir, and the matsutake rank. The shiitake rank and matsutake rank items are proof that you managed to bop a rare truffle into the air 50 and 100 times, respectively. They don't serve any other purpose, but you can sell them for a little money. Next up is the Black Fungus, which appears in Agrabah's Bazaar, Halloween Town's Moonlight Hill, and for a brief period in Hollow Bastion's Dungeon. This Mushroom Menace is the only aggressive variety, attacking with poisonous gas that drains your HP when you get too close. They have super high defense, and they can become invincible for an extended period of time. If you want to earn the money and rare items they can drop, you'll need to defeat them in a very specific way. The Black Fungus will only drop items when defeated with a critical hit. To increase your chances of landing these hits, equip all of Sora's learned Critical Plus abilities, as well as Slapshot, Hurricane Blast, and Combo Master. Be sure to unequip any Combo Plus or Air Combo Plus abilities that extend your combo. And equip the Wishing Star to Sora. This keychain guarantees that you'll land a critical hit with every combo finisher. You can strike a Black Fungus with ground combos to continually stagger them if you're quick, but this becomes a lot more difficult when more than one of them is nearby. I would only recommend using this method if you can single out one fungus at a time, which is a little easier to do at Moonlight Hill. You can also pick up and throw the pumpkins in this area, which count as a critical hit if it makes contact. A more reliable close-range method is to jump and use Hurricane Blast to land critical hits in the air. This will help you avoid being staggered mid-combo from their poison gas attacks. And with Combo Master equipped, you'll only have to worry about making contact with your air combo finisher, which should be Hurricane Blast most of the time. This airborne method works well in Agrabah's Bazaar, if you find that your party members are interfering with your combos, you can summon Bambi to remove them from combat. And speaking of summons, the Simba summon can be used to easily defeat Black Fungus with critical hits as long as you can charge up his Proud Roar attack at least 5 levels. 
Each time you see Simba in the Keyblade Pulse with light, that means the attack's power level has increased by 1. Releasing the charge after 3 levels should stun all black fungus in the area, allowing you to charge it again without having to worry about incoming attacks. A fully charged Proud Roar should defeat all black fungus with a critical hit. This is a great way to farm for money and dropped items. The Trinity Limit ability can be used in the same way, but due to its long cast time, you might miss a fungus if it becomes invincible. As long as it's defeated with a critical hit, the black fungus has a chance of dropping a Mystery Goo and 50 money. And if you're really lucky, a black fungus might drop a Mystery Goo, 400 money, and the super rare Mystery Mold item. The Mystery Mold doesn't have a functional use, but you can sell it for a whopping 3,000 money. And finally, we have the Pink Agaricus, which can be found in just two areas, the Undersea Cave in Atlantica and the Treehouse in Deep Jungle. We'll focus mainly on the encounter in the Treehouse. This groovy guy can drop a rare synthesis item and a super rare accessory if you cast Stop and land as many hits on him as possible before your Stop magic runs out. But before we can do that, we need to get it to appear in the first place. You'll know when the pink agaricus is nearby when you enter the area and the only heartless are white mushrooms that are frozen in place. Cast stop magic on these mushrooms to have them release MP orbs and disappear. There will be three of these mushrooms in all, and their positions are randomly selected from 11 possible locations. Click the link in our video description or here in the video to see a complete list of spawn points. Once you've cast stop on all three white mushrooms, the pink agaricus will appear in the center of the treehouse. If you encountered Sabor at the treehouse a second time during the story episode, the pink agaricus will fall through the hole in the floor and drop down to the netting below. This optional encounter with Sabor is only available after entering Deep Jungle for your first visit and before you encounter Sabor in the bamboo thicket as part of the story episode. With the pink agaricus now present, you can cast Stop Magic and strike it as many times as possible. The more hits you can land while your Stop Magic is active, the better chance you'll have at earning Serenity Power used in item synthesis. If you want to reach the maximum 100 hits to acquire the Prime Cap accessory, you'll need to maximize your MP and acquire certain abilities and magic. Just a heads up, we'll be mentioning some late game story spoilers as we walk through how to set up your party. For best results, equip the Diamond Dust Keychain to Sora. You can acquire it by defeating the Ice Titan in the Gold Match at Olympus Coliseum. We've put a link to our tutorial video for that fight in the video description. If you don't have Diamond Dust, Lady Luck is a decent alternative. Equip any accessories to Sora that increases MP and summoning power. Here's a list of the best accessories sorted by their magic boost. For Sora's abilities, you'll need to equip Ragnarok. This ability is learned after defeating Ansem Riku in Hollow Bastion. If you have Hurricane Blast, Combo Master, Lucky Strike, and any Air Combo Plus abilities, equip them as well. And finally, enter the Customize menu and add upgraded Stop and Arrow Magic to your shortcuts. Sora learns Stop Magic by defeating the Parasite Cage at the end of Monstro's Story episode, and he can earn upgrades for Stop by completing Pooh's Swing during the third torn page of the Hundred Acre Wood, and by defeating the Phantom at the Neverland Clock Tower. Sora learns Arrow Magic by defeating the opposite armor in Traverse Town, and he'll earn upgrades for Arrow by returning all 99 Dalmatian puppies and unsealing the Yellow Trinity in Neverland. Check out our Magic Spells Guide on the KH Guide's website for more information about these spells and how to acquire them. With Sora's setup completed, enter the treehouse area and cast Stop on all three white mushrooms as you find them. When the pink agaricus appears, cast Arrow Magic on Sora and position him so that the barrier is hitting the mushroom. Toggle your lock on so that you're targeting its head. Cast Stop Magic and immediately activate Ragnarok. Use the impact command when the charge at the end of the Keyblade is as large as it can get. It'll take a little less than a second to fully charge. After sending out the lasers, immediately strike the Agaricus with complete air combos. And when the lasers dissipate, continue this cycle of Ragnarok, Impact, and air combos until the stop spell expires. If you're fast enough, you should be able to use Ragnarok and Impact on it three times before stop dissipates. When the pink Agaricus starts to move again, your hits will be tallied and you'll earn experience in the form of 1 plus the number of hits. At every 10 hits tallied, it will drop money and restorative items, and you'll have a higher chance of earning Serenity Power as well. 
If you manage to land 100 hits, the Pink Agaricus will drop a Mystery Goo, a Serenity Power, and the Prime Cap Accessory, which grants you the highest defense boost in the game at the expense of your attack power. If you're playing the 1.5 HD Remix version of this game on the PlayStation 3, there's one major exception to this method that you need to know. In this version of the game, Donald and Goofy will start attacking the Pink Agaricus when you press the triangle button to activate Ragnarok. This is a problem because Donald and Goofy's attacks actually count against your total hit score. To prevent this from happening, there's a trick we can use to trap Donald and Goofy and keep them away while you strike the Agaricus. After casting Stop on the White Mushrooms, move Sora to the platform with a tall ladder on the east side of the treehouse. You might need to wait there and move your camera until both Donald and Goofy appear on the platform with you. Once you're on the platform, summon Bambi and move Sora to the Agaricus. With your camera pointed to the platform where you summoned him, dismiss Bambi and proceed to use the attack method described earlier. If done correctly, Donald and Goofy should reappear on the platform outside and will be unable to reach you. If you're only interested in acquiring Serenity Power for item synthesis, it's possible to summon the Pink Agaricus in Atlantica's Undersea Cave and use Arrow and Relentless Attacks to reach about 40 hits. It's a lower chance at receiving the item, but it's pretty consistent and doesn't require as much precision as the Deep Jungle method. And that caps off our fun guide to Mushroom Heartless in Kingdom Hearts Final Mix. I hope these tips and tricks don't leave Mushroom for error or give you any trouble. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and let us know how you became a Mushroom Master in the comments section. Big thanks to our guiding lights and shining beacons on Patreon for their support. You can join us on Patreon to receive lots of community perks, including early access to future videos. You can also find me live streaming on Twitch as I continue work on new tutorials and walkthroughs. And as always, you can find the best guides and walkthroughs to the Kingdom Hearts series at khguides.com. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.